there's hardly an innings that starts where in the press box we're not we're not talking about Gilbert bloody Jessup. <laughs> So after day three of the first test in Mount Monganui, it's time once again to ask George. The cricket draft asks, how many runs do you concede to validate a dismissal tactic uh, in, in reference to, to Neil Wagner's short approach that was uh, quite quite damaging and, and briefly successful to, to Wally Pope? I don't know the answer, but uh, it felt as if New Zealand were rattled in that spell. I think Wagner went for 98, I think, in his first 10 overs, which would, you know be murderously expensive in an ODI but in a test match it was just it, it was fairly bizarre and he did take a couple of wickets and it did briefly seem that New Zealand were vaguely back in the game but lord they took some punishment I mean it was it, it was what this English cricket side does they are full of entertainment they take some risks sometimes you think they've let it slip and then they win it, it, it was uh, it was what they do in uh, microcosm and, and, I, and what they do most of all is rattle opposition teams. It's that Mike Tyson thing. Everyone's got a plan until you, you punch them in the nose. It, it it must be very, very difficult when they come at you in the way they do. Uh, how do you beat them? I don't know. Maybe you want to play on a, on a wicket that does a lot. I don't know. I think English batters are quite adept against the seeming ball. I think uh, English bowlers are very adept. But maybe that's how you try it. Maybe you take them on with extreme pace. I don't think so, but let's see. I don't know. Uh, they're very, very good. And we're in new ter territory. And the thing is that people keep saying they're going to get their comeuppance and they keep winning. I mean, you can keep predicting the downfall of anything. You know, one day the, the, the rocks will melt, the sea will burn and we'll all perish. Uh, and the naysayers will be proved right. But Ben Stokes is about to become the most successful test captain in history in terms of getting to 10 wins in record time and what have you. Uh, at what stage do you just stand back, give them credit and say, this is brilliant? Innocent bystander asks, by skewing individual records for the collective team, good. Is baseball the first truly communist cricket concept? I wonder about communist, but I, I, I would like to think that the way that the uh, uh, money is shared in English cricket between the counties is kind of a socialist ideal, isn't it? Dodging, dodging the question there. So uh, English cricket has actually always been, always. <laughs> well, no, I'm not. I don't think I am. I, I think English cricket is designed on a sort of socialist uh, platform, uh, and it seems very odd that it would be. But the way that there there is a, a, a pretty equitable sharing of income through the counties if nowhere else, um, would, would seem to be the same sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be that surprising that um, in a team game, it's about the team results rather than the individual uh, performances. And uh, cricket has long had a bit of an issue with that. Um, but Ben Stokes in particular gets that. I mean, you know, I almost wrote a piece today on how England should be getting more out of Ben Stokes. But he's just about to become the most successful test captain in history. How much more do you want? Sushan asks, will folks be talked about like a reverse Gilchrist in future years when teams come play all when all teams play basketball? <laughs> I don't know about that. Um he brings so much composure to the team. I guess it's a it, really it's, good question. Um it is it, interesting. It, it, it's a really good question because uh it, it's basically gonna be the first line of several articles by lots of people, no doubt. Um he he does bring a lot to the team. Yeah, I think I think the question's better than any answer I can give it. All I would say is he's actually a very elegant player, scores quite quickly. And today, if his run rate was a bit slower, it was just because he needed to rebuild for England. I mean, he actually gives them a bit of security in that lower middle order. You know, obviously a very good player. JWL asks Broad and Anderson, just for how long will they go on? Uh, the, look, it can't go on much longer. It won't go on much longer. Enjoy every second of it. You know, what you may have seen today from Stuart Broad was an encore at the end of a fantastic career. I don't know. I mean, look, it's not going to end tomorrow, probably. Uh, it might not end for six months. But you can't be surprised at this stage in their careers when it ends. So savour it. Enjoy it. And also celebrate the fact that in Joffre Archer and Ollie Robinson, England have bowlers who can carry on, can take the mantle, 
Uh, what, what did uh, Ollie Robinson said yesterday? You know, carry the baton forward. Uh, and, and they have. I mean, that's a very good place to be. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think a lot of uh, people have written columns suggesting that Stuart Broad was near the end yesterday. And he proved them wrong. And it's brilliant that he wants to prove them wrong. And he's got the appetite to do that. And that he bowled so well today. It's not a bad thing to have lots of good, good bowlers. Dave Thomas asks, "Is um, it's always the batters who get the glory, but isn't it time we talked about how good the bowling has been under the new management? I think Neil Clean's only been in place for a couple of couple of weeks. I think I've got I think I've, I think I've got <laughs> things in things in my fridge that are older than, than his uh, than his tenure as as the bowling coach. But uh, yeah, there's been some change over there, I guess. Uh, is he on tour? I don't, know. I don't think I've seen him. I saw I, I went up Mount Monganui this morning and." I uh, saw a few of the England staff. It's not very good for your self-esteem to be passed by them. The bowlers get quite a lot of credit, don't they? That Jimmy Anderson fella, he gets quite a lot, doesn't he? But, but you know, the question is right. Uh, of course it is. You, you can't win games without your bowlers doing well. Uh, and England's bowlers have responded really well. And Broad's a really good example. You know, one of the things I really love about Stuart Broad, and it's a bit like Andy Murray or someone, um, is that he loves the competition, he loves the sport so much that he is quite happy to keep competing, trying to reinvent himself, when he knows he's he's not quite as quick as he was, is he? He can't do that that spell that we saw in Durham in 2013, you know, when he tops 90 miles an hour for eight or overs or whatever. But he, he has uh, learned other skills. And I love the fact that he's, he's basically a pitch it up, hit the top of off stump with wobble seam bowler. Uh, which is something he couldn't do five years ago. So um, that's a brilliant thing, and they deserve all the praise. Look, no pair is going to break the record that they've set today. Was it 1,005 uh, test wickets in partnership together? Lord knows how far they'll go. But bearing in mind the likely future of test cricket, you know, probably fewer games, and the fact that they add up to, what is it, 76 or something together, so many things have to fall right for a partnership like that to build and flourish for so long, I just don't see it as a record that's ever going to be beaten, unlike Gilbert Jessops. There's hardly an innings that starts where in the press box we're not we're not talking about Gilbert bloody Jessop. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think they're gonna they're gonna go down in history as one of cricket's great pairings, you know, Larwood Vice, Lily Thompson, Greenwich Haynes. I, I don't know, they're they're right up there with the very best pair of, you know, Wacker and Wazim. I mean, we talk about Wacker and Wazim, obviously fantastic bowlers. Maybe they were better bowlers, but they could end up with double the wickets as a partnership. These are phenomenal numbers. So I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the person who asked the question. Oh, fair enough. Um, yeah, well, it's, it, it, you know, they deserve all the praise they're going to get. 